Today on an all-new Dr. Phil in this family. She said you're an emotionally stunted bully. She pretty much hit that right on the head. The only one. You put your hands on another human being. But you don't. Behaving like an adult. You got here and started criticizing my staff. I was joking. That's not funny. Is their 15-year-old daughter. When the kids start fighting, I try to break it up to where the adults don't get involved and things don't get worse. How did this become your job? Let's do it. Is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. I try to be an emotional compass and point you in the right direction. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. If you're a parent, I want you to pay particular attention to today's show, and I want to tell you why. You have an impact on your children's lives, and today we're going to be talking about just how much impact you can have on your children. Now, you know it's bad when I hear from a 15-year-old who says, I have two years, three months, and 15 days left in this house. I'm fed up with all of the drama here. I'm sitting in my bedroom and I like it that way. There's no drama, there's no fighting, there's no yelling. There's no calling names. I'm not one of the outcasts of the family. I mean, the family split into two sides and I'm right in the middle. So I hide in my bedroom. So just what kind of life is this? 15 year old Michelle's mother, Valerie says the household has a theme of mean. So today, Donnie and I started talking about our relationship, or lack of it, and all it is is sex. He says, we're not even together anymore. We don't even sleep in the same bed anymore. And I just told him, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I can't make love to somebody. I don't want to kiss somebody. That's mean. That's mean to me, that I know doesn't like me, uh, that, that is mean to my kids. I really don't understand how you can turn it on and off like that. But I'm sorry, my tutu is is connected to my emotions. Well, Valerie says her family is faking it. Not a day goes by without everyone being miserable. She told us things she has never said to her husband, and she says she is worried about what will happen on the flight home. On the outside, we look like we're the perfect family. But we're all just faking it. Valerie and I don't have much in common. My family is always at war. We're gonna turn it off. What are you gonna do, hit me? Our family is torn down the middle. It's Donnie and my nine-year-old daughter against my eight-year-old son and myself. Why did you do that to your brother's face? Our 15-year-old daughter, Michelle, is either referee or hiding. My youngest daughter, she's nine. She's a lot of my life. Donnie favors his princess. She controls everything. I'm not talking to you. Donnie says I favor our eight-year-old son. I do favor our son, but I try to compensate for what he's not getting from Donnie. Anything that goes wrong in the house, it's our son's fault. <laughs> Donnie gets angry, he yells, he swears, he throws fits. I use my size to intimidate him. We were on the way to school one day. My son was aggravating our nine-year-old daughter, and Donnie said, I've never won somebody up so bad in my whole life that I right now. Oh yeah, he writes me a whole lot. My son is scared of Donnie. We can find him sleeping under the bed or in his closet. And recently, we slept under the fort on the floor. My wife and I don't even sleep in the same bed. I always sleep with my son and I sleep on the couch. Donnie and our nine-year-old, they do whatever they want when they want it. And she stomps, she throws things. Go ahead. Screams, swears. Shut the door. Either we fix this or we're done. You've written to me three times over the last 18 months. I have. Is it getting better? Is it getting worse? Is it staying the same? It's getting worse. It's progressively getting worse. We just try to make it till bedtime every day. So this is a desperate situation. It is. You said if this isn't fixed, I'm done. We, Adam, we have no choice. We're not functioning. Are you unhappy? Yes. Is it showing to the kids? Absolutely. Are you unhappy? Yes. Is it showing to the children? Definitely. 
She said you're an emotionally stunted bully. Is that true? She pretty much hit that right on the head. Did you say to your eight-year-old son, I have never wanted to anybody up more in my life? I didn't say it to him. I said it in the vehicle on the way to school. You didn't look him in the eye and say yeah. it, but you said it about him with him sitting there. Yes. Were you in the car? I was. Mm -hmm. What did you do? When they got out of the car, I hit record on my phone and started talking to Donnie, saying, why, 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 why do we do this? And he said, he drives me to this point. He drives me to this point. But they're children, and we've made them the way that they are. It's our fault that they're like they are, and there are issues there. We just need help fixing it. Mm -hmm. Donnie's mean. You have a 15-year-old daughter. I do. She says you two hate each other, and it's apparent every day. She says she is the only adult in this house. We can go days without communicating, without speaking. Days. You have a favorite? Yeah. Well, I bonded with her more than the other ones. I don't know why. I just, I bonded with her. Is it apparent that she's your favorite? I mean, yeah. this, look, at this point, we just have to be honest. And you're quick to take his inventory, and he's quick to take your inventory, but you aren't very quick to take your own inventories. But what about you? Do you have a chip on your shoulder? I begrudge him. Are you hard to get along with? Do you think it's specific to him, or do you think it starts to contaminate all your relationships? It probably leaks over to all of my relationships. And I'm angry. And I'm very bitter, and I'm hurt. You asked me for help. I not did. once, not twice, but three times. And then you got here and started complaining. You said one of my staff members was like a baked potato with no filling because he was so dull. A staff member working around the clock on your behalf, and you want to criticize that staff member because you don't like the personality? I was, I was joking. That's not funny. Then I got a staff member talking to your mother and you send an email to another staff that says, tell them to get off the phone. That's, I said, get off the phone with my mom. I didn't yes. want my mom, and I didn't want her. Oh, so you're going to tell me how to help you. No. You want my help, then you're going to tell me how to help and send abusive and foul mouth emails to my staff. Do you think that's appropriate? No. Then you get here, we put you at the Universal Sheridan. Not good enough for you. You had to move hotels. I asked if we could move to another room, and they didn't have one. People come the world over to stay at this hotel. Beautiful hotel, inside and out. It was very beautiful. But not good enough for you. You, you write me three times, say, I need help. My family is crashing. You serious about getting help? You just looking at somebody else to bitch at. No, I need help. I didn't come here to be fake. I, I, I am, this is who I am. You've seen it. You see it. Help me. Help me change. I stand up for my staff. If I'd have known this before today, you'd be in my rearview mirror. And those three children are the reason you're not. I appreciate that. We'll be right back. Have you gotten to the point that you feel like you're going to explode? A lot of times. What did he say? What do you want me to do? Just kill myself? Do you have a gun in your home? Got a lot of them. And later... My siblings started arguing again, and Mom had enough. She started yelling and screaming. We're just bad kids, and that there's nothing of this family worth salvaging. We can't save it. There's no repairing it. They just pushed and pushed and pushed until I can't take any more. And she got her car keys. She packed her bag, and she left. Tomorrow on Dr. Phil. You wrote me 63 emails. I was desperate. A May-December marriage. I'm 26 years younger than Don. With issues. She says, you get mad, stomp your feet, and put your fingers in your ears. That keep stacking up. Are you a hoarder? I don't think I'm a hoarder. He is. I'm on top of it. I'm acknowledging I have a problem. No, you're not. You said she's just a neat freak. Bastard. You need to stop talking and listen. That's tomorrow. Donnie has worked away from home. 
He's gone up to 10 months. It was like we were dating and everything was perfect. When Donnie came off the road, things became more chaotic. Let's shut the door! Because it was throwing a stranger into the mix. He didn't feel like he fit in there. Donnie goes, well, you turned my boy against me. I don't know what you did when I was on the road. I did the best that I could do. I understand you were on the road making money and trying to do what was best, but I did what I could do. I feel like if he went back out on the road again, that we could have our family again, then we could go back to the routine and everything would be fine. But we can't do that anymore. Damage has been done. Valerie and Donnie have been together for 13 years. Now, Valerie says his parents, she and Donnie, are epic fails. What, what do you think about the fact that this woman who says she loves you, loved you then, still loves you now, is feeling so backed into a corner and so trapped that that's what she says on her video diary? Right. Ain't those kids should be growing up a lot better than what they are. They don't need to be growing up mean and monstrous or bullied by me. That's something I never wanted. What are you so upset about? What are you so mad about? No, I just don't have the patience like I used to. Why? Have you knocked holes in the wall? Yeah, I, have. I hold it in a lot. Okay, w what is it you are holding in? And listen, it's time <laughs> to give your feelings a voice. It's time for you to tell me what's going on. I, I, I want to help you here. I don't know how to show feelings because it wasn't shown to me when I was little. My parents were never home. Where were they? Working, two jobs. What do you say to yourself as a kid? I mean, you wish you, your parents were there helping you homework or you know, sports or whatever, but they were never there. Have you gotten to the point that you feel like you're going to explode? A lot of times, I feel like I'm falling in the same shoes as my parents. I don't want that. Do you have a gun in your home? I got a lot of them. H have you taken that gun and said, what do you want me to just blow my head off? No. Have you gone outside and shot that gun in the air in anger? In the yard, yeah, I have. What did he say? He said, what do you want I'll me to honest. do, just kill myself? You were saying that? No, when I'm mad, I, I say a lot of things. Do I remember it? No. If I didn't, it, it, she pretty much tells me the truth, so. Have you felt like that? No. Why were you shooting that gun off in the middle of an argument? Why were you going outside shooting that gun off in the air? I was so pissed off that after it was done, even, I, was, I was calmed down. What did you think when you heard that gun go off? I didn't know. I didn't go outside for a long time. Did you think you might walk out there and find him laying there with his head shot? Stand up right here. Stand up right here. Look him in the eye. How did it get this far? How did we get like this? I have no idea. He just... Look her in the eye. Don't look away. Look her in the eye. You deserve to be happy. Not living with a bitch. You deserve to be happy not living <laughs> with a monster. Right. Tell him what went through your mind and heart when you thought he might be laying dead in the backyard. I didn't know what to think. <laughs> I didn't want to go outside. Man, I didn't think. Uh, Look her in the eye. <clears throat> I never meant, meant you to feel that way. You are the kids. That's, that's the only way I knew how to, to handle it. You gonna kill this marriage? You wanna fix it? No, I wanna fix this. I still love you. I love you. <laughs> Sorry. They've been living an emotional divorce. That has to stop. Coming up, Valerie's 15-year-old daughter says she's tired of being the adult in this family and she wants her parents to come together. Maybe this is the beginning that will give her some hope. We'll talk to her next. Because I'm not a problem and I'm a good student, I'm completely ignored. I often cry because of it, because 
Where do I fit in? I mean, I'm utterly alone. Our 15-year-old daughter, Michelle, a straight-A student, National Junior Honor Society. We couldn't draw a better child. She's being recruited from colleges all over the world. She's fluent in English, Spanish, and she's learning Russian. Michelle tries very hard to keep the peace, but then when she sees it's not working at all, she just tries to avoid it. She doesn't want to be part of our chaos. Turn it off! So she does her own little thing. I'm fed up with all of the drama here. And she's picking up an attitude because she sees what the other kids get away with. And if I were her, I would as well. Why well, try to do everything correctly when no one else in the house is functional? Well, Valerie's 15-year-old daughter, Michelle, says that she's a forgotten child. She says she's a forgotten child because, well, frankly, because she doesn't create problems. She's planning her escape from her family because she just simply can't take the stress anymore. I feel ashamed to call the people I live with my family. The kids always fight. Mom will go off and she'll break things. I threw things down on the ground. And Dad will go off and he'll scream and he'll cuss us out and slam doors. Screw family. Screw being a family. It's not important. I think it's said that my parents are oblivious that they're causing the chaos in the family because of their favoritism. They're focusing on one child and they can't see that the other one wants their attention just as much as the one that has all their attention already. Shut my, my siblings fight like cats and dogs. They hit, they lie, they scream. Boom. They kick, they bite. Turn it off. I'm not turning it off. Get over there. But because I'm not a problem and I'm a good student, I'm completely ignored. I often cry because of it, because where do I fit in? I mean, I'm utterly alone. I feel like I'm just a trophy daughter. After they brag about me, I just need to go back to my room and just disappear. I am loyal to my family, and I do love them, but I do not like them. Michelle, it's good to meet you. Good to meet um, you. Tell me about the younger ones. Uh, what's going on with those two? They have absolutely no discipline. I mean, they're buck wild. It's just out of control. Valerie sent us some home video of what her daughter has been getting away with. Let's, let's take a look at this, and I'll have you comment on it. Apparently she slapped him. Why did you hit him? I'm not talking to you. Why did you do that to your brother's face? And his neck and his shoulder? I didn't mean to. Oh, you were giving him a kiss, and, and, and that's what happened? What? You're ridiculous. You put your hands on another human being. But you don't. Do I? Yeah. When? When? Tell me when. When have I put my hands on another human being? Tell me. Wow. Um, charming. Um, is that pretty typical? Yes. Normally it doesn't get to the... Actually, he bleeds and then the scratching, but it, it does get like that. How are you doing in school? I'm doing very well. You speak different languages? Yes, I'm learning several and I'm... Several? Several, and I'm getting better at Spanish. And what else do you speak? Um, I'm learning Russian, German, Finnish, Italian, Japanese, and Chinese. Of course you are. <laughs> um, 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 where do you spend most of your time in this house? Most of the time I spend it in my bedroom. I'll watch Netflix, I'll listen to my music. Sometimes you just cry. Yeah, sometimes I do cry. I cry because I can't keep the peace, because I feel like it's my fault that I can't do anything about it. How did this become your job? Because mom's always at work and dad's usually doing something. And so when the kids start fighting, I try to break it up to where the adults don't get involved and things don't get worse. You try to keep the adults out of it because they make it worse. Yes. Uh, and so when it doesn't work out, when, it, when you aren't able to keep the peace, then you feel like you failed. Yes. Your little brother and sister's family is going to have imploded because you failed to do what you needed to do. Yes. And so you think about that a lot. Yes. Well, I have a really, really important question for you after the break that's probably going to be the hardest question 
you've ever tried to answer. We'll be right back. My father is one of the many people that makes me feel insecure about my weight. Whenever I go to get food, he'll say, you know other people have to eat too, you know, or don't eat all the food. And when food goes missing in the house, he makes comments like, oh, Michelle ate it. But instead of helping us, my father and sometimes my mother, they just put us down. You say no matter what you do, you feel like it's not good enough for your stepfather? Yes, that's how I feel. What would it mean to you to have his support and approval and validation? It would mean a lot. You deserve better treat than what I've done. I am proud of him. I love you. I just don't shield. I don't think you've ever said that before. Ever. Have you underestimated your importance to her? A lot. It's okay. I forgive you. No, I wouldn't forgive me. I have a really hard question for you. Fire away. <laughs> I want you to do something for me. I want you to close your eyes. And I want you to imagine a 15-year-old girl. She is smart. She's pretty, she's devoted, and she is carrying a really, really big burden. You see, she's figured out through some distortion in her mind that it's her responsibility to carry the weight of an entire family on her own shoulders. But you know that it's really not her job. You know that it's really not her responsibility. And I want you to tell her like you would tell a best friend, hey, listen, you can love and care, but it's not your job. Why should you be responsible for the weight of everything? A family, a marriage? It's not your place. It's not your responsibility. Your responsibility is to make all the screw-ups now so you don't make them later and learn from them. You should watch and see what not to do when you're married or when you have a family. That way, you won't make that mistake. And your family can thrive in the future, even if right now it's falling apart. How about I take care of them, you just be a teenager? That sounds incredible. What if I told you I had a plan? I'd like to know the plan. <laughs> and I'd ask you one question, will the plan work? <laughs> And my two answers would be, it's not your job to worry about what the plan is. <laughs> and yes, it will work. Let's do it. We'll be right back. Honestly, I do love my grandparents more than I love my parents. My grandmother is really more like my mom. We'll go to Mexican restaurants so I can practice my Spanish. We'll go have picnics in the parks. And she gives me the attention that I want, but I don't get. And my grandpa, when I'm upset, he'll take me and he'll sit me on his lap. It's nice having that love that I miss out out at home. Tomorrow on Dr. Phil. You wrote me 63 emails. I was desperate. A May-December marriage. I'm 26 years younger than Don. With issues. She says, you get mad, stomp your feet, and put your fingers in your ears. That keep stacking up. Are you a hoarder? I don't think I'm a hoarder. He is. I'm on top of it. I'm acknowledging I have a problem. No, you're not. You said she's just a neat freak. Bastard. You need to stop talking and listen. That's tomorrow. 
My mom has said several times that she wants to just pack her bags and leave. Just last year, Dad had gone somewhere, and my siblings started arguing, like, and Mom had enough. She started yelling and screaming, we're just bad kids, and that there's nothing of this family worth salvaging. We can't save it. There's no repairing it. They just pushed and pushed and pushed until I can't take any more. And she turned to me, and Mom said, Michelle, you can just give up. You can leave with me. And I said, no, ma'am. I, I couldn't give up on my siblings. And she got her car keys, she packed her bag, and she left. After she was gone, I caught my siblings from running into the street down the driveway, and I managed to get the kids to sit and calm down while I cooked some pasta for lunch. And my dad came home two hours later, but he was yelling and screaming at us about how we're no good, that we've driven mom away and she's not coming back and she never will, that it's just not worth it anymore. But my mom didn't come home till the next day. If we can be happier living apart and, and have some kind of normalcy, then why don't we? It feels like I am the glue, the only person that's keeping this family together. Now, Valerie's mom, Deborah, says her daughter's household is complete chaos. Deborah says if Valerie would approve, she would raise Michelle. Deborah is going to join us on Polycom right now. Deborah, what would you like to add at this point? That I can't raise Michelle. That is her mom's job. I would love to. She's my heart. They need help. Well, they that... can be a very functional, wonderful family. They have wonderful qualities. Well, I, I couldn't agree more. And here's the thing that I, I want everybody to hear, and this is why I'm saying, Michelle, you need to take a step back and be a 15-year-old and let me get involved here because this is way over your pay grade. Because the two of you are creating some monsters that you don't even know yet. When you grow up, when you grow up, like, you know, here's, here's the parent. Uh, you know, this is kind of like the, the tree here. And then you, you have the kid coming up and, you know, they really glom on to the parent early on. But here's the thing. They begin to branch off. This is just where they start to get into the independence. But the tighter this is right here, then the harder this is. Sometimes it can be gentle, and sometimes it has to be really sharp because it is so tight that it doesn't just become a splitting off, it becomes a rebellion. And let me tell you something, it is getting ready to be a monumental break off. And when it does, all that attitude you're seeing out of that daughter standing there in utter defiance, at that age, about all she can do is stand there. Add another year or two to that, where you mix in boys and cars and booze and drugs, and the older they get, the bigger the consequences of their bad decisions, the bigger the consequences of that breakaway, the bigger the consequences of that defiance. If, if you aren't seeing it now, the first signs are gonna be radical grade drops. You're gonna see radical grade drops. What, what, are, what are the grades now? They went from A's and B's to straight F's. A to B to straight F's? Yeah. yeah. The first step. Because what they've started to say is, I don't have to do anything. And it, that's where it shows up. That's the first thing they start doing is checking out. There's a real simple rule. Do not reward bad behavior. This is not rocket science. You just do not reward bad behavior. You are sabotaging these children. Valerie says she wants a plan on how to get her family back on track. Well, here we go. We'll be right back. We have a lot of fun here in the studio audience. 
If you're going to be in the Los Angeles area and you would like free tickets, go to drphil.com and click be in the audience. Or you can call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445. We got two things here. This relationship has to be redefined. You just have to hit the reset button and start this over. And I think I think you are both prepared to do that. Am I right about that? Right. Yeah. Or are you prepared to do that seriously? Yeah. Um, I I I read you as being very sincere about that. You got to make a decision that you're either going to carry on the legacy that you grew up with, or it's going to stop right here. Yeah, it's going to stop. You're all pissed off. Have you noticed that nobody cares? Just get back in the game. There's no point in being a victim. Be a victor. Get back in the game and decide that the two of you together are, are going to, to redefine this relationship and redefine this family. Now I'm gonna ask you to do something for me because I wanna jumpstart this. I want the two of you to call time out. I want the two of you as a couple to go somewhere for me. I, I, I want to, I have set up for you to go to Onsite. Now Onsite is a place in Tennessee and they are the worldwide leader in therapeutic and, and personal growth uh, ex experiences that are really custom designed for what you need. And this gives you a chance to go in and totally focus on your relationship and your family. I then want to get family therapists involved in helping redefine the relationships with the family, but after you've gotten some really intense work for a period of time. I think this would be absolutely life-changing. We know that you still love to ride horses, right? Yes. And you just haven't been able to recently because family finance is going towards the younger siblings and after-school activities and that sort of thing. Um, so, I didn't want to just focus on them. So we have arranged for you to have a year's worth of horseback riding lessons in your hometown, okay? A year's worth. Um, so you're gonna be able to go every week for a year and really do some sophisticated work on some horses and stuff like that. How would Thank that be? Thank you. All right, fair enough? All right. Coming up, a woman who has a long list of dating demands. The man must not sleep naked, have a clean driving record, and he can't be too flashy, to name just a few. Will she ever meet her man, or is she sabotaging her search? We'll find out after the break. Ready to get real? Go to DrPhil.com for advice on relationships, parenting, finances, and more. Plus, weigh in on your favorite episodes, share your stories, and find support in the Dr. Phil community. When you sign up for the community, you will automatically be subscribed to the Dr. Phil Show newsletter. Log on to DrPhil.com today. When Leslie lost her husband in a tragic accident, she waited seven long years before she started looking for love. But now she wonders if her list of dating do's and don'ts is a bit too daunting. Take a look. No, oh, hi, baby. I made a proclamation that within one year I would be happily married to the right person. My family's laughing at me, but I think I will. I'm a widow and a mother of three boys. My husband passed away seven years ago. It's time for me to find somebody to share my life with. I've grieved enough, and I do want some companionship, but I'm also at an age where I don't want someone bugging me. It is frustrating to date. I want to go out and be social, but I am set in my ways. I have a list of demands. I'm looking for a man who 
loves his mother. If they have horrible driving records, they're out. I won't date a man that sleeps naked. And I tend to compare men to my dead husband. Is that being too picky? I don't want to compromise. I want to find somebody that gets me. My three sons will have to approve of the guy that I ultimately marry. My biggest fear is that I will be alone. Okay. Well, that's a pretty substantial list. That was just some of them, right? That was just some, but I think it's pretty short. Yeah? Yeah. So right, yeah. has anybody come close? Not really. No. Yeah. So you think it's a pretty short list, but nobody's even come close. Have right. you had somebody that you went out with, but when you started going down the list, you went, eh? Yep. Would they Absolutely. fail? Driving too fast, driving recklessly, and my safety is so important. And it also tells me something about their personality. Why are they so hostile on the road? I think it's telling. But you haven't found anybody that... I have found people that are good drivers, but then they don't meet the other criteria. If a burglar breaks into the house, then I don't want them, you know, challenging or saving my life naked. <laughs> How are they going to scare a burglar? Well, they're, you they're don't vulnerable. know. They might scare the hell out of him. <laughs> <laughs> they might just step up there. Like... <laughs> oh my God. Well, I didn't consider And the guy that. may go, whoa, hey, listen. <laughs> Excuse me, wrong house. I mean, uh, you don't know. Did your husband meet all these criteria? Oh, yeah. Did you shape him into that, or was he that way when no, you married him? it was that way just from the beginning. So you just found the guy. I found the guy, and we were just a perfect match. Well, and and you lost him seven years ago. I'm very sorry for your loss. But you think you're ready to move on. So I gave you a quiz that I created called the rut test as the first step so I could kind of analyze your situation. This is a test that... Uh, it just kind of gives me a sense of where people are. And I pulled out a few of the questions. Question 14 is the most exciting thing that's ever likely to occur in your life something that has already happened? And your answer was you admit that that's probably true. It is, it is true. And it's, it's having my children. I mean, okay. having children, having a family, being a family unit. All right, question I've 16. Do you feel alone even when people are around? Your answer, yeah, I admit that's true. And those are just a couple out of the test. And um, you had eight admits. And this is what the test told me about you. Uh, you're in a rut. Oh, <laughs> that's the rut test. Yeah, okay. yeah. And that means that you need some direction. You need some guidance. And from what you're telling me about kind of how rigid you are in the way you're approaching things with some preset criteria. I mean, you're not exactly playing fast and loose out there. So I consider you being in a rut, a pretty <clears throat> deep rut, actually. And look, here's the thing. The reason I created this rut test is because there's a difference between living as a prisoner of your past or a prisoner of expectations of other people or a prisoner of what you think you're supposed to do, even if it's from yourself, expectations you impose on yourself, or maybe it's expectations from others. And I think it's really important for us to examine whether we're living our authentic self or we're living something that we've been assigned or what our expectations are. And because there is a, and this rut test is a great way to get there. And you make choices in your life. You're making them now. And one of the things about choices is you cannot not choose. Because not choosing is a choice. You can say, well, I'm just not, I, I'm just not going to choose right now. Well, that's a choice. Right. That's a rut choice. People in ruts choose not to choose. They just say, I'm just, I'm just not going to change anything. I'm just not going to choose. That's a choice. And it isn't that people don't have the answers to get what they want. The problem is they don't even have the questions. Wow. That's the problem. Think about it. It's not that you don't have the answers to get everything you want in your life. 
you don't really even know the questions to ask yourself to determine whether you're living an authentic life or whether you're not. That's what I want you to do. I want to give you the questions. And by the way, for those of you at home that want to live an authentic life, you should take this rut test, by the way. And I've partnered with Life Reimagine, and if you can go to the website, you'll find the rut test right there. And you can score it yourself, and it'll tell you whatever score I've written down, what each of your scores mean. So go to lifereimagine.org, and you can take the rut test. But there's something else there, too, that I want you to do. Okay. I have created the next best thing to doing that. Because I have created the most unbelievably high-tech, interactive program that I think exists. And you go in, you're going to take a lot of tests, you're going to do a lot of assessments. Uh, I think I've got like 50 videos in there explaining different things. You're going to talk about self-concept, private journal, 10 defining moments in your life. All these things where I give you the questions that will get you to the answers. And you'll find that on lifereimagined.org. And I want you to do that. I want you to go through it. And it's called Become the Best Version of Yourself, a personal journey guided by Dr. Phil. I, I want you to do that. And in fact, everybody in the audience, I'm going to give you a password where you have a, f a free access to this entire program so everybody here can do it. So everybody here is going to get free access to it. Um, I guarantee you it will be life-changing if I do say so myself. And you might pop up out of that rut when you do it. I think I'm all right, we got to go. I got to thank all of my guests today. Thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Remember, lifereimagined.org. Thanks for being here. Thanks so much.